Welcome to All In for Estacada Schools. Joined by School Superintendent Ryan Carpenter, we'll be taking an in-depth look into the work, the data, the wins, and the fun that's happening every day in the Estacada School District. Hey, welcome back and happy Monday. There is so much going on inside the Estacada School District right now, and I'm pleased to have this opportunity to go all in with you about the hot topics and major decisions we are faced with today. Today, I'm going to go deeper and spend some time going over our changes to our back to school plan and dig deeper about the face mask requirements, the rules, and things that I'm also hopeful about regarding some of these changes. What's something no one knows about you that you might consider a special talent? A special talent that most people don't know about me, I'm actually going to share two things. Uh, the first, which is super unique and probably nerdy, uh, is that for a long time, I try my best to study and know every single Oregon high school mascot. So I grew up a teacher and a coach of many sports. I played sports in high school. Uh, I grew up in a family who coached high school athletics. And so I've had the opportunity to play a lot of teams, to travel to a lot of different communities. And I always love asking people where they're from. And when they tell me what high school they went to, I really enjoy telling them what their mascot is, which always catches people off guard. So that is one really awkward, quirky, uh, talent uh, that I don't mind sharing today. Uh, the other that most people don't know is I also know how to play the piano. I've been playing the piano since I was a very young age and uh, enjoy playing it when I have opportunities to do so. So accomplished pianist and mascot knower is who I am. That's a tough question though. And if you're listening to this podcast today, what would you say your special talent is if people asked? Hot Topics. So as we dig deep into our hot topics uh, going through the Estacada School District right now, uh, face coverings just continues to dominate the conversation. And I think it's important before we dive into the Estacada portion of it to just acknowledge that the, the conversation and the topic of, about face coverings is a national conversation. It's a conversation that's occurring in each and every of our 50 states inside the United States. It's occurring in all different venues in the state of Oregon, from business to government uh, to restaurants uh, and all of the above. Every place we go, face coverings continues to be a topic. And I think before we start, we must recognize that People have different opinions and different perspectives about face coverings. I have my own personal opinions. The listeners have their personal uh, opinions about face coverings. And we just need to take a moment to just take a step back, to take, take a deep breath and understand that there is no decision that the Estacada School District can make at this moment that's going to please the entire community. And I just wanted to start by saying that because we need to give each other a little bit of grace. We need to have our minds continue to be opened and acceptable because at the end of the day, face mask or not face mask, what we're all trying to do is educate our children and allow them to be as competitive as they can possibly be when they leave our homes in Estacada and our schools to pursue their future. And that is objective number one. And I think it's important to start with that lens as we dig deeper into what face coverings is gonna look like to start the school year for the Estacada School District. So Estacada Schools has officially made the changes to reflect that of the governor's mandates. And you can go to the Estacada School District website to see our official plans and safety protocols when it comes to reopening our schools to full-time in-person learning next year. 
So what does the governor's mandates or changes mean for the Estacada School District? And I want to take a little bit of time because there's some good news inside of this as well uh, that's new that I'm excited to share also. So first and foremost, it's important to remember that the face mask mandate is only required when students, visitors, parents, and employees are inside the school building. So while children are in their classrooms, you can expect and anticipate that face coverings and face masks will be required for all people to wear. However, when students are out on recess, when there's PE going on outside, when there's any type of outside activity or event, face masks will again become optional for the user. And so while your child is out there on recess, it is their choice and your choice if they'd like to continue to wear a face covering or not. If a PE teacher decides to take his class out in the early fall uh, to do ultimate frisbee or soccer or kickball or any other type of outside energetic and or exercise activity, face masks are optional outside. It is only when children are inside do they need to wear face coverings. And I think that's an important reminder is this isn't 100% of the time face masks are required. And it's also not when students are doing high energy outside activities. One of the great things that I learned about last middle in the middle of last week is that extracurricular activities are also going to be a local decision for school districts to make. And so if your child is playing soccer or football or volleyball in the fall, uh, they have their own choice to wear a face mask or not. Now, again, the majority of this work is an outside activity, uh, but I do appreciate that the state and the local health experts have realized that kids who are working hard and breathing hard, uh, that face masks at times can be prohibitive uh, to their overall performance. And so this is a good opportunity for kids and families, again, to have their choice to wear a face covering or not when participating in athletics. I've received a lot of emails really where families and parents are very unhappy with the governor's decisions. And by the way, they're also unhappy that the Estacated School District is choosing to follow uh, those mandates but they also seem to add in there their frustration or, or give a reference about the difficulties that their child had when playing sports and wearing a face mask this year. So I am pleased to at least be able to say uh, that students who are engaged in an extracurricular activity where they're choosing uh, to participate in a sport and or activity, face masks are optional at that place. We also wanna make sure that we remain focused on full-time learning and closing gaps and getting back into that routine. You know, a lot of people have asked me, and I don't mind sharing this in the emails that I continue to get, and that is, what is your personal opinion about this decision? And I need to make sure to clarify first and foremost that there's a personal Ryan Carpenter and then there's a superintendent Ryan Carpenter. And superintendent Ryan Carpenter is required to follow, lead, and execute all Estacada School District policies, which includes following the laws, the rules, and the regulations set, set forth by the state of Oregon. But my personal opinion is very simple. My personal opinion, when it comes to getting children into school, it, that is my number one priority. I have children inside this district as well. And all I really care about at this point is getting them back into school full time where they can get back to learning and where they can get back to playing and doing some of the normal things that we've become accustomed to of the great things of sending our kids to school. That's my number one priority. If my children have to wear a face mask or if I'm mandated as the superintendent to ensure that all people are wearing face masks, 
mess. That is secondary to ensuring that all kids are back in school full time to receive their education. I've got to tell you, I'm very pleased with what the Estacada School District did last year in comprehensive distance learning and hybrid learning. And we were when we were finally able to open our schools back up to the majority of our students. But we're starting to see the data and the data is telling us that our kids went backwards in a lot of different areas when it comes to learning in math, learning in reading, and learning in the English language arts. And so as we, the Estacada School District, build and execute on a plan to close the gaps of the learning loss that occurred last year, it could not be more essential to get children back into the classroom with their highly qualified teacher and great support staff to close those gaps for your kid. So I've got to say, and this is going to be an unpopular statement that I'm going to say to some, is if they're wearing a face mask or not is not high on my totem pole as much as it is that I've got to get your kid and Estacada community children back on track for graduation. I've got to get them competitive with other kids from other school districts so that they can have a successful chance once they leave our community. That's number one to me, and what the kid is wearing on that first day of school is less important to me as much as it is giving them the opportunity to come back to school full time. And so my personal opinion, even though I'm surprised, uh, I personally love the freedom of choice. I love local liberties and, and people's liberties to make their own decisions. I personally am in favor of that, but I also care about making sure that my children are on campus five days a week to close the gap and to have a fighting chance once they leave our community to have a successful future. And that's the only thing at this point that I care about. So if my kids have to wear a mask to accomplish that, then so be it. I'm focused on making sure that our kids graduate on time and are competitive. And that's what I care about most at this moment. So one of the frequent communications I also am getting is about comprehensive distance learning. So several families are saying in their email that because of this face mask mandate, they're going to make the decision to pull their child from the Estacada school district. And I want to celebrate that first and foremost, because again, uh, the state and the Estacada school district is a public K-12 organization that is ultimately run by the state. The state has made its decision to require face masks for K-12 institutions indoors, indoors only. But why I'm celebrating this is because you, as a parent, still have your individual right and or liberty to determine if you want to send your child to a state public school or not. The reason, again, like I said in my personal feelings about making sure that all students are in school full time five days a week is so that we can begin to close some gaps. The data has showed us that kids were harmed by being in comprehensive distance learning or by being a part of uh, hybrid learning or being a part of the cohort that only allowed them to be on campus two days a week. There was tremendous harm. I know that a lot of parents say that kids wearing a face covering all day long is also harmful to their health. And while that may be so, and there is some evidence to prove that that may be so, I'm also telling you that they're harmed by not being in school and learning and closing those gaps with educational experts to support their learning and their future. And so again, I just wanna you know, encourage you to, you know, you now have the information from the state for you and your family to make the best decision that's right for you and your family. You're still afforded that right. And of course, the Estacada School District is all about the freedom of personal choices when it comes to that right. However, a lot of questions on social media are asking us, do we plan to offer a comprehensive distance learning uh, model? 
for uh, our families because they're pulling their kids out? And my answer to that at this point is no. We do not intend to offer comprehensive distance learning because the data has told us that it doesn't work. Our kids are falling farther behind through that process. Now, there are different schools and charter schools out there that do serve this need. And I encourage families who just refuse to put a face mask on their child that there are different options for that. But at this point, the Estacada School District is focused entirely on serving its children on campus five days a week uh, to get that learning and routines going again. And uh, we'll always be ready and welcoming with open arms uh, if, if mass mandates change and families choose to move their kids back to the Estacada School District when that's done. You're more than welcome and always welcome to be a part of this school district. But in the meantime, like I shared before, we're focused on serving all kids in person, mask or not, uh, based on requirements, mask or not, um, and closing those gaps to the best of our ability. One last question that I'm frequently receiving is what are the consequences if the Estacada School District were to choose not to follow the governor's orders? And I learned last week very specifically that those penalties are very steep. So the civil penalty for a school district who communicates to its community that they will not follow the governor's orders is a $500 per violation per day fine. So let's just say this hypothetically really quickly. If the Estacada School District were to announce publicly that we were not following the governor's statewide K-12 mandate for face coverings inside. All it would take is for one person to report that to OSHA, the Oregon something, 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 uh, workplace safety group. And ultimately they would come out, they would see uh, our efforts. And we have 1,800 students inside our school district and growing right now. And let's just say roughly a thousand of our families, because I honestly think a thousand out of 1,800 would choose not to wear a face mask right now, if not more, that's $500 per 1,000 students per day, which turns into a $500,000 a day fine. Now, as your superintendent, you're asking me to be more transparent and fiscally responsible with the local taxpayers' money and how we invest that in our schools and for Estacada's children. It would be a ridiculous decision for me to knowingly and willingly put us in a spot that could potentially cost our school district hundreds of thousands of dollars um, that I think could potentially be avoidable. And so I just can't advise our school district to move in that direction. I've also been told uh, through the state of Oregon that there's a potential loss of licensure. So teachers uh, and or administrators and or superintendents uh, who choose not to follow these rules uh, could be investigated by the Teachers Standards and Practices Committee uh, and could lose their license uh, for not following the laws and or policies of the Estacada School District. And last but not least, we would lose our limited liability waivers. And so because we're trying to open our schools in the middle of a pandemic, there's a lot of liability and complex legal uh, procedures that are a part of opening up a major logistical um, operation like the Estacada School District. And if we choose not to follow the safety protocols, uh, that leaves the Estacada School District very, very exposed uh, to potential litigation if things don't go well. Um, and again, that would cost taxpayers money in that lawsuit. And all of those things, the, the fines, the $100,000 of fines and the potential lawsuits, all of that impacts our classroom and what we're trying to become inside the Estacada School District. And so the consequences are real. Um, and so it's our responsibility but it's also probably the more logical decision 
to follow these orders so that we can keep our schools open, get our routines going, and hope very soon that these face masks, which I believe is a temporary solution, uh, will soon begin to relieve itself and face masks will once again become an optional decision. But as your superintendent, I'm less willing to battle this front because the consequences for our children are steep and for our state finances are steep in correlation to just getting our kids in school so that we can start the learning process again. I hope this helps. I know that there will be people who uh, who may not agree with this. Again, I ask um, that you extend grace and keep an open mind because this is such a polarized conversation uh, and everyone's opinions are very strong. Um, I just hope that you know that I love the Estacada School District and I only want the Estacada School District to be great. And I'm gonna continue to lobby for local choice and local decision making and personal freedoms. But at this point, it is to the Estacada School District's best interest to follow the governor's orders, open up our schools, welcome our children back, and start closing those learning gaps as soon as humanly possible. And that's where my focus is going to be as we welcome our children back. <music> What's in Ryan's inbox? Last week, I received 1,118 emails, averaging 223 emails a day. I'm very pleased that my response time was nine hours and 50 minutes. And let me tell you, uh, the emails were coming in hot and heavy last week, as you can imagine. Uh, and so I'm pleased that I've had the opportunity um, to average nine hours. I'm trying so hard uh, to respond back to our local families. Uh, I'm also getting inundated with outside um, lobby groups as well. And so I'm trying hard to uh, find our local families and respond to them in a timely manner. So the number one theme, uh, surprise, is about face coverings. Uh, and again, I just want to reiterate that I'm so thankful uh, that you have a place to be able to communicate your support for this decision and your outrage and frustrations uh, for these decisions. And I just want to encourage you to continue uh, to utilize your superintendent, your school board of directors to share your feelings and your voice. We are so committed to being a school district that represents the values of the Estacada community. However, a lot of people are continuing to ask me to disregard and to move our district in a way that disregards the governor's uh, state mandates, which ultimately have now turned into law and will come into effect 10 days after the law is there. And I just wanna remind everybody that as a state organization, we are required and responsible to follow all federal and state laws, rules, and regulations. We have local policy established by our school district in place to ensure that your school district follows laws and regulations. And I just don't think it's right to think that we, as, a, as the Estacada School District, can pick and choose to follow laws or not to follow laws because we don't like them or not. We need to make sure that we're being consistent in following all laws and all regulations and that your elected school board members and their superintendent is not picking and choosing inconsistently which laws it wants to follow or which laws it doesn't. And so I know that this decision is not a popular decision around a majority of the Estacada community in terms of requiring face masks, K-12, for its students indoors, but at least know that your superintendent and your school board of directors are faithfully following policy and holding ourselves accountable to following and executing those policies inside your school district. The irony of some of the emails that I'm getting is some of the very people who are demanding fiscal responsibility 
fiscal transparency and doing different things with our money, following laws and procedures, are the very people asking me not to follow these specific laws. And so again, as we work so hard to be financially transparent and make decisions that are of the best interest of the community's taxpaying money, and as we just continue to analyze our return on our investments, it is a unwise financial decision uh, to not follow these current governor's mandates. And so again, my email inbox is full. I'm trying my very best to respond to our local families and our local community members who want to share and weigh in on their opinions. Uh, even though some of them are mean-spirited and some of them are not nice, I am reading every single one of them. I'm trying my best to listen to all of them. I'm trying my best to understand understand the perspective that you're coming from. And I'm also trying to reply with grace, with class, and with dignity as I collect your voice and share with you the direction and course that your local school district is going. And it's ultimately to be that best in class school district that we all want the Estacada School District to be. So keep those emails coming, and I'm going to try my best to stay orderly in my response to you. Thank you. Fact or fiction. In this week's Fact or Fiction, we are jumping on to the wonderful platform of Facebook, where we will address some of the following statements uh, that we have seen on social media. And as you can imagine, with the governor's new mandates and the movement of school districts throughout the state of Oregon to uh, change uh, their models to comply with those, uh, social media has blown up uh, all over the place. And so there are two statements um, because, again, we want to make sure that the truth is being uh, communicated even in social media platforms. So there are two that I would like to address today. The first is this. The schools could be shutting down again like they did last year. This one is fiction. And why I say it's fiction is because the whole purpose or one of the purposes and the why behind requiring face masks for all students K-12 indoors is to have our schools open five days a week. So the state and the Estacada School District are absolutely adamant about serving kids in person full-time five days a week for the next school year. Uh, and we are adamant about that as well. Like I said earlier, the data has definitely shown that the majority of students who receive their learning through comprehensive distance learning, that's CDL, or through charter schools, or through other type of alternative education offerings, it didn't work. The data shows that the learning was tremendously behind, not on schedule and or lost. And so at this point, uh, the school districts will not be shutting down anytime soon. It is the reason why the mask mandate was put in place to begin with is so that the Estacada School District and all schools inside the state of Oregon could serve kids in person five days a week so that we can begin closing that gap and bringing kids back onto campus who were unsuccessful in virtual learning. The second factor fiction uh, statement uh, that has come up on uh, Facebook that we, our communications team, have noticed is that the statement on Facebook, vaccines are going to be required by the Estacada School District. That too is fiction for now. I know there's a lot of chatter out there at the national levels about potentially making this vaccine a requirement for all of America, United States of America's people. At this point, the Estacada School District has no plans to require vaccinations for its children, 
and or its employees. We have said this before, and we are remaining steadfast in this. The only thing that would change our policies and or protocols towards this vaccination mandate is, again, if the state requires it at a whole state level. And in that case, the Estacada School District would be required by law to continue to execute that mandatory vaccination requirement. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, how could they do this? This is outrageous. Well, believe it or not, there are several vaccinations that are state-required in order for your child to be enrolled in state schooling. Children are required to be vaccinated for chickenpox. Children are required to be vaccinated for measles. Children are required to have a tetanus shot, and parents have to show proof of that upon enrollment of any public education school. So in all seriousness, to require proof of vaccination of COVID-19 is not outrageous or anything outside of the norm of some other mandatory vaccinations. But that being said, the Estacada School District at this point does not intend to require vaccinations for any of its students or any of its employees. And the only way that we would do that is if required to do so by the state of Oregon. So the parents who said on Facebook that vaccines are going to be required, that is fiction. At this point, we have no intention to require and or show proof of the vaccination. I hope this helps dispel some of the many, in fact, hundreds of Facebook posts that are out there right now about our school district and or the governor's orders. We're going to continue to stay steadfast and focused on our mission, our vision, and our values. And we'll continue to look for things that are true on social media and untrue on social media in hopes that we can dispel some of those myths and that you, a person who's listening all in for Estacada Schools can help us share the truth and the story to our community. So that's Fact or Fiction for this week. Thanks again for jumping all in for Estacada Schools with me as we talk about some of the hot topics going on inside our school district and at the state level and at the national level. I know that there's a lot of very strong opinions about the decisions being made and I just want to reiterate that this is the whole purpose for this podcast. Our parents and our employees said that they wanted to know more about the decisions, the big decisions that the Estacada School District was making. And we made this intentional effort to create this communication, the podcast communication, to share with our families, to share with our employees, and to share with anybody who's interested in the Estacada School District about these big decisions and the path that we took to make the decisions that are there. I challenge you to find other school districts who are this transparent and this open about some of the very controversial things that are occurring throughout a community and throughout that community's local school district. This is a true and authentic attempt to be open, to be honest, and to share with open arms what we're looking at and analyzing to make the best decision for this community. Continue to jump all in. Please tell more people about this podcast because again, the Super 60 Seconds is designed for a quick hitter about the big things that are going on. This podcast is a deep dive to share our story and share our journey so that the Estacada School District can be that best in class school district we all want it to be. Hey, times are tough. Things are changing. You have a very flexible and agile school district ready to take on any challenge that's thrown its way. This could not be a better school district to have your child in right now. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.